Hey guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about things I wish I'd known about pregnancy, giving birth and having a baby um, that I wish I'd known beforehand. Wouldn't have changed my decision on whether or not I wanted to have a baby. I've wanted to have a baby since I knew what a baby was pretty much. Um, you know, I knew I wanted a family so it wouldn't have changed my decision. Just wish I'd had forewarning. Right, number one. Now, I knew going into being pregnant, I wasn't going to be able to take um, medication to help with pain and stuff like that. I, however, did not realise I would not be able to use my ibuprofen gel. Don't know why I didn't realise that. Probably should have sunk in a bit quicker than it did, but I didn't realise that. And I use ibuprofen gel on my joints a lot to help with the pain I have daily with my joints. But, you know, I have it all the time, I'm used to it, but some days are worse than others and I have to use the gel did not realise I couldn't use that, so I had to find other alternatives. If you are in my position and need another alternative to rub on your joints or your skin or whatever for a painkiller, Tiger Balm is amazing. <sighs> Point one. So, couldn't take a lot of medications, was in pain a lot. Point two. I knew there were certain things you could get while pregnant, so um, gestational diabetes, anemia, uh preeclampsia stuff like this i knew about that did however not to expect to be knocked on my butt so you, if you haven't seen my giving birth my labor and delivery story video you won't know i ended up anemic at the end of my pregnancy was not caught by my midwife didn't find out till two or three weeks before i gave birth not a good position to be in um and it totally knocked me out for six and i obviously at the time I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me I was just like oh it's all it's my other health condition being affected by the pre I'm really worried I'm gonna knock that off um it's my other health condition being affected by my pregnancy that must be what it is um I'd spoke to my auntie she was like oh yeah I was exhausted whilst I was pregnant and you know I kept getting dizzy and stuff like this I thought it was perfectly normal it was not probably should have seen this coming my mum's anemic so it probably should have seen it coming um however midwife should have caught it really so was not expecting to be knocked on my butt, but I was. Was not expecting the list of food that you can't eat while pregnant to be so extensive to the point where we actually made a pack up to go out for like, we were going to the zoo or whatever the, for the day. And we was making the sandwiches and I suddenly thought, oh, can I eat this? And it turned out I couldn't. I couldn't eat what was going in the sandwiches. So Callum had to quickly run out to the store and grab something that I could eat. Um, so I was not expecting it to be as extensive and I was really upset that I couldn't have pate over Christmas. Which is quite ironic because when my auntie was pregnant, bear in, bear in mind her youngest is about turn 30, that she was actually encouraged to eat pate and liver and stuff like that. I thought it was quite funny. Well, not funny, but you know, like how times have changed from what we've learned, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay. So I think that was it for pregnancy. There were a few things that kind of woo. Um, is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so giving birth. So everyone I had spoken to, everyone in my life that has been pregnant while I've been alive, had very short labours. Talk, not very short, talking between like 10 and 18 hours. Like, my mum was in labour with me 17 and a half hours. I was in labour for 32 hours. I was not expecting my labour to go that long at all, in any way, shape, or form. But I say I was in labour for 32 hours. My waters broke. 32 hours later, James was born. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really sweaty. Uh, yeah. So, I was not expecting it to be that long. I was not expecting to be in hospital for almost a week either, because when my waters broke, I obviously went into the hospital, um, because I was planning on giving birth in the hospital in any way, sh anyway, because I just thought that's where I'd be safest, especially considering all the other issues I had. I wanted to be able to have access to all the, like, pain medication and all the medical knowledge that I could. So, was not expecting my labour to be that long, especially as they say like, oh, if you wonder how long your labour's gonna be, look at how long your mum was in labour for. 
My mum was in labour for 17 and a half hours and 16 hours. Me and my sister. That is not even close to 32. And my mum's waters didn't break initially. My mum's waters broke while she was contracting. Mine broke and I didn't start contracting. Well, I did. Small contractions. Not massive ones. Just little, itty bitty, teeny tiny contractions. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, but yeah, so was not expecting my labour to go that long. Obviously, I had a cesarean. So, here's some things I did not expect about the cesarean. They make you sign a form saying that if you, um, if it is, if you bleed so much that it's life-threatening and the only solution is to give you a hysterectomy, they make you f sign a form saying that you allow them to do that to save your life. And if you don't sign the form, they won't do it. And I'm just like, why wouldn't you sign the form? Now, I understand some women would be like if i can't have another baby i can't think about that but you there's a baby that needs you please let me know in the comments because this is i just i can't wrap my head around it and i want to so please just let me know um <coughs> rude <laughs> um okay yeah um So obviously before I had my cesarean, I already had the epidural because my contractions were so painful. I just couldn't handle it because I was on Pitocin. They were so, so painful. I just, no. Um, but I, I didn't know that when they can't monitor the baby on your stomach. So you have monitors going across your stomach when you're in labor. Monitor, one monitors your contractions, one monitors the baby's heartbeat. If they can't, like for instance with my little one, he kept moving around, so the monitor wasn't able to pick him up properly um, because he just kept moving. So what they had to do is they actually had to put a uh, cord inside me and clip it to his head. Yes, clip it to his head. That is what they told me. They said they had to clip something to his head. <laughs> And I was like, what? Which, by the way, not the most comfortable thing getting put in. Yeah, not not comfortable. But while they did that, they also put my catheter in, so it wasn't an issue, although very uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, so one thing that was with me while I was on the table having my caesarean, I don't know if this was just me, because I was so out of it at the time from blood loss and blah, 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 being feeling weird because I was anemic at the time. I, before I had... My cesarean, I had two units of blood. During my surgery, I had one unit, and then after my surgery, I had two more units, like, the next day. So, I don't know if it was just me, but while I was on the table, they basically ignored me. The only person that's... The only two people that spoke to me were the anesthesiologist and my cousin. But, basically, everyone else ignored me. I didn't find out that they had... They couldn't locate a sponge. I didn't know how much blood I had lost until my cousin had told me the next day. Um, and honestly, I still can't remember most of my labour, but my cousin obviously remembers everything. So we've actually been having chats about everything. And I was on the table a lot longer than I thought, which I have mentioned in my thingy, labour and delivery video. Um, yeah, I was on the table a lot longer than I thought. I honestly thought it was like 20 minutes in and out done, but it turns out I was on there for like, one and a half, two hours nearly. Um, but what I had been told is that when you have a cesarean, they say to you, do you want to be able to see it? They put like a mirror up. But no one asked me that. So I didn't get to see him being born. I, they didn't even hold him up for me to see. I didn't see him. I heard him. Because I heard him cry when he was born for all of the 10 seconds that he cried. Um... But I didn't see him until my cousin brought him to me, which was a good like few minutes after he was born. By this point, I was like being sick, so I was like, um, "Ow!" Sorry, I cracked my neck. Um, yeah. So, wasn't expecting that. Well, no, I was expecting to be asked to put a mirror up. To be fair, I would have said no. Because quite frankly, you don't want to see that. <laughs> um, 
but I was just surprised, I suppose. Another thing that surprised me is, uh, I didn't find this out until after I was out of the hospital. When, after I'd had my cesarean and that, I wasn't actually supposed to be picking James up. Like, when I was, like, in the ward, I was on the ward, I was in bed, they had basically confined me to the bed because I couldn't get the sides down because um, they got put down from the outsides. I couldn't get the sides down. They basically had me confined to the bed. I still had my catheter in. I think they just wanted to wait until after I had my blood transfusion to let me get up and move around so I wouldn't, you know, pass out. Um, but I didn't find out until after I had said after I had got out of the hospital and started uh, talking to people on a group on Facebook that I wasn't supposed to be picking James up out of the incubator. Um, because they literally just had the incubator next to me and I was just picking him up and putting him back as and when I needed him, like, or he needed me. So like, if he started crying, I picked him up. A lot, like, during the day, I just kept him on the bed with me, like, I put him between my legs so that he was safe, he wasn't going to go anywhere. I mean, he wasn't going to go anywhere, there was sides on anyway, but you know what I mean. But then at night, when I was putting him down to sleep, I was just doing it myself. I think... I got to one point where I said to someone, I was like, can you please, like, feed him, change his nappy and put him down? Because I was so exhausted, I was terrified I was going to drop him. And they were like, that is not a problem, you go to sleep. So I went to sleep, they changed him, fed him and put him down to sleep. And then when he started crying, I woke up. But by that point, I had like three hours sleep, it was fantastic. Um, but I didn't realise I wasn't supposed to be picking him up. Because apparently if you do that, you can blow your stitches. I didn't know that. And I was just picking him up, changing his nappy, feeding him, doing everything. And I didn't have a clue. So I could have just, you know, blown my stitches there and then. And I wouldn't have known any different. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be laughing. That's actually, like, quite bad, really. But I shouldn't be laughing at that. I think it's funny. Um, but yeah, so, there's that. Um... So I definitely wish I'd known that, and now I know for the future. Um, at least in the hospital I was in, um, I didn't know they won't let you go home until you fart. Yeah, I know. That one really threw me out of the... That one really threw me, but I was just like, what? When the nurse or midwife came around and said it to me, I was like, why? And she was like, because of the way the cesarean is done, they have to move your bowels out of the way. And... Farting means they've done it properly, they've put it all back properly, and it's all in working order. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. One other thing they did, that, well, they made me do, that I was really confused by, they made me weigh my wee. <laughs> I had to weigh my wee three times before I left. And it really confused me as to why. I still don't know the reason. If you know the reason, let me know. But I still don't know the reason. Um, so it made me weigh my wee. So, sent me home with a ton of medication. Didn't know I had to do injections into my stomach. That's another thing. They were anticoagulant. Co um, I didn't know I had to do that. Wish I'd known that beforehand. I'm not, I'm terrified. Well, I was terrified of needles. Not anymore. Funnily enough, six weeks of having to inject yourself in the stomach, you don't really care about needles anymore. Um, <laughs> Right, got discharged, came home. Right, I did not know how painful breastfeeding is. And not in a, oh, my nipples are sore kind of way, because that I was expecting. I was not expecting uterine, uterine contractions. Was not expecting that in any way, shape or form. And oh my God, that was so painful. Not as painful as contractions, but that was so painful. Was not expecting it to be that painful. I was doubled over in pain. Like, what? Wasn't expected. To be fair, no one would have known to tell me because, I mean, wasn't planning on a cesarean. Didn't think to ask questions or anything like that. So, didn't know. But, um, while you're healing, you're pretty much numb because obviously your uh, nerve endings have been severed. But while they're healing, they sting a lot. 
and you've got to think, it takes six weeks to recover, you're back up, moving about, but it takes a lot longer for your scar to completely heal. I am four months postpartum, my nerve endings have just started to come back online, and oh my god, it's so painful, to the point where my doctor has put me on nerve blockers, because it's so painful. Um, which aren't working, so that's not great. <laughs> um, didn't realise that it was going to be that painful, which I should have. But I've never had surgery, so I wouldn't have thought to... I wouldn't have known it would be that painful. Um, but one thing that's really thrown me through a loop at the minute is I'm still numb across my scar and around my scar. I can't feel anything when I touch it. So phantom itching. Oh my God, it's so annoying. You feel like you have an itch, but if you scratch it, it hurts because your nerve endings are coming back online. But it's a phantom itch. It's not actually itchy. You just think it's itchy. It's so annoying. <laughs> um, another thing, not sure if it's just me. Uh, I keep getting like stabbing pains across my lower abdomen. Maybe it's from where my uterus has been shrinking back down. Possibly, not sure. But it's, I, I spoke to my doctor, he wasn't concerned about it or anything, but it's just something I wish I'd known wish i'd known i was gonna have all these pains um so i have joint hypermobility syndrome um wish i had known that having my baby to be fair lost three stone while i was pregnant um but i wish i'd known that that in combination with having my baby would have sent me into a flare-up um because for a good two months a good two months after having him i had trouble getting up and down the stairs and it wasn't from my cesarean because it was my knees specifically my knees and my elbows were really killing me obviously knees from all that weight being lifted which you would have thought would help but it's because how quickly it happened and then my elbows because obviously i now had a baby to carry around um wish I'd known, I wish I'd actually just, you know, used my brain and thought, oh, I'm going to be in a flare-up after this. Uh, thankfully, I was able to use my uh, ibuprofen gel in that. Okay, so it's actually the next day now. My mum dropped mum off, uh, my, my mum dropped mum off. My mum dropped James off um, uh, towards the end of filming that clip, so um, it's the next day. <laughs> um, and I couldn't be bothered to get my tripod and stuff out, so I'm just holding my phone and it's in forward facing, so this is probably gonna be worse quality than the previous clip. But one thing I wish I had known about is tongue ties because I had no idea what was going on with James and it was actually my health visitor that pointed it out, so I wish I had known about them beforehand. But, you know, now I know for the future and I, I know for when people I know have babies so I can help them put, look out for it. So one thing I wish someone had said to me about is I wish someone had said that I might not feel attached to my baby. The first couple of weeks I was fine and like I felt really attached to him, but then not like not attached at the same time. It's kind of like I was just floating around in my own bubble of, you know, being a mum. And then once we settled into a routine and he was becoming a bit more independent rather than near me all the time, um, I didn't necessarily feel like I was unattached to him uh, because I love him to pieces. Don't like, don't get me wrong from this. I love him to absolute pieces, but you have a baby and you're just kind of expected to be happy all the time, and that just isn't the case. Like my emotions have been like a freaking roller coaster, up and down constantly, and it's hard being a mum. It's difficult. Uh, and it's not just like, oh yeah, you're a mum, um, you, you need to focus on the baby now. Because like, it's hard to look after someone when you're not looking after yourself properly. Being the fact that I did not take care of myself very well for the first couple of months of his life. Um, and then my depression got really bad and my anxiety got really bad. And I didn't recover the way I thought I was going to recover and the way I hoped I'd recover. And like sometimes if he's really crying, I feel like I, there's just nothing I can do. I just... And that's overwhelming. 
and it's a shock to your system when you can't figure out how to help them especially because at the moment James is teething and he's just in so much pain and there's nothing I can do like I can give him medicine to help the pain go away but I can't like explain to him oh you're going through this because you're getting teeth or like when I took him to have his vaccinations oh you're going through this because it's going to protect you from all these nasty bugs I can't explain that to him he's a baby he doesn't understand um and like stuff keep popping up on my phone um and like um i wish i had known more about having cesareans because like my cesarean scar still hurts and it stings a lot to the point where my doctors put me on nerve blockers for it because it's just so painful and because my nerves are coming back online but it's so painful and like if i'm holding james and he's like kicking like no tomorrow me right in the stomach it hurts so much like it's indescribable like it's not as painful as like the contractions i went through obviously but it's so painful um and i have to put him down and then he's like wait we were playing what's going on and he, he's confused but i'm in pain he can't like understand that um like, it's, it's, it hurts recovering from a cesarean and like like you, you're never the same again ever because obviously like you have scarring there you have a baby your body's changed forever but i mean i wish i'd just known more about cesareans i knew there was obviously a chance it could happen i just i didn't think to look into it i should have that's my bad my fault um but in my life i i don't know anyone that's had a cesarean to be honest everyone i've known has given birth naturally how i wish i'd known how lonely motherhood can be um and pregnancy pregnancy and motherhood can be so lonely sometimes you feel like you can't talk to people about things you're going through because you're expected to just be happy because you have a baby but it takes a toll on you like i don't go out much um like i go out to my mum's once a week usually to just drop off james um and then i have a couple of coffees and then i come back home and do housework and like when i'm at home on my own with james and he's having a day where he's super fussy it's hard to get the housework done but then i feel like i haven't done my job while i've been taking care of the baby the housework hasn't got done so i feel like i haven't done my job properly which is stupid to think let me know if any other mums out there felt like that um you know, and I feel like if I complain about the pain I'm in, then people are just going to be like, oh, but you've had a baby. It's not about just being happy because you've had a baby. It's hard. Um, but, like, one of the biggest... I don't know, not benefits. Um, one of the most rewarding things about having a baby that for whatever reason no one told me is watching them go through their milestones like james slept through the night for the first time last night he's four months old and he slept through the for, for the whole night didn't wake up for a feed didn't wake up for his dummy anything and like that's amazing and like when he held his head up on like he was holding his head up from birth and when he smiled at me for the first time, like a proper social smile, not just because he had gas. And like watching him go through all these milestones, watching him turn into a little person, to become the person he's going to be as he gets older, is so rewarding knowing I had input in that, knowing I helped him with that. It's crazy. It's mental. And the reward not reward that you know that incredible feeling of having your little one and watching them grow thoroughly outweighs all of, like massively out massively outweighs all the sad not sad necessarily but all these other feelings i'm feeling about my cesarean and like what james went through when he was just a couple of months old because of his tongue tie and but watching him grow and overcome all this stuff 
it's massively rewarding. So it's another new day, new hair. Uh, I just wanted to put in here that when I was talking about uh, how I had trouble connecting with James, I, at the time, hadn't actually spoken to anyone about it. Uh, I have recently told Callum how I felt, but at the time of recording that clip, I hadn't told anyone. And I still feel very alone because he just, he doesn't get it. Um, which obviously isn't his fault, but he just doesn't get it. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then leave a comment, like, subscribe. Um, if you want more videos like this, let me know. If you don't, you want me to shut up, then let me know too. Um, <clears throat> let me know your experiences. If you're a mum, a dad, whatever. Um, if you're a parent, let me know your experiences below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.